Wouldn't it break your heart not to have the baby's father here, God rest his soul, <laughs> celebrating his daughter's first lovely year among us? It's the only sadness on this joyous day, Braddy. Had you been present at the birth, you'd have cause to believe this day had never come. Know that I'd be here to remember it. There's lots easier ways of having babies. Did you give your mammy the calamitous time of it, though? Didn't you? Here's someone you haven't met yet, and it's time you did. Say hello to Mary Boyle, my niece. Hello. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. She's the daughter of my half-brother, Liam. Does that make us related somehow, do you think? It might well at that, I suppose. <laughs> hello, Bridie. Where have you been keeping yourself, Mary? It's been a time. Might you be up to a dance, darling? Why, certainly. All right, all right. <laughs> I wonder if you had any new thoughts about your baby's dad. What about him? Well, about him knowing that the child exists. If you mean have I had any new thoughts about telling him, the answer's no. I wonder if it's quite just. It is to me, Colm. It seems a terrible grudge. He'll know when I'm ready for him to know. That has the sound of a very distant future. Colm, I'd prefer not to discuss the matter further. I know you would. But I would be derelict in my duty if I didn't at least broach the subject. What duty is that, for heaven's sake? My duty to the rightness of things. <laughs> <laughs> it is so good to have you back, Red. I'm so glad of it. Well, I could hardly fail to return on the day of my wedding anniversary now, could I? Not if you knew what was good for you. <laughs> shall we have a toast to the first year of what I hope shall be many of wedded bliss? I don't believe this is your third toast already this evening, Mother. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> I trust your trip up north was successful in its intentions, Red. Beyond my expectations. And I expect my next trip's going to be beyond yours, my dear. Mine? How pretty is that little bauble hanging from your neck is I believe I can do a bit better by way of an anniversary present. Oh, I don't see how you could do any better than that, Red. Well, that must have cost you a fortune of money. What do you mean, Red? Well, I've decided it's come time to combine some pleasure with my business. In a couple of weeks, you and I are going to be sailing far away to a foreign land. Where to? England first and Ireland. Oh, my! Oh, what business do you have over there, Red, if I may inquire? I'm going to buy a horse, Mother. I've never been anywhere. You're traveling across the ocean <laughs> to buy a horse? <laughs> you can buy a horse two miles from here, Red. Not the kind I'm after. I'm going to breed horses, Mother. Now, some of the finest horses in the world are in Ireland. Now, Sally put me in touch with a friend of hers in the Emerald Isle. And I believe he's going to put me in the way of one or two good animals to start my string. Well, good on Sally. Well, I for one, or should I say two, <laughs> am delighted to hear this. Is it going to be more or less of a hobby for you, Red? Well, I think if it just turned out to be a hobby, Mother, I could say that I'd failed miserably. A most unlikely happenstance, I should say. Oh, England and Ireland. Red, I'm so thrilled I could choke. Oh. Happy anniversary. Yes. You've a call, ma'am. It's Lord Fenton. Come on, darling. Are we going to have our tea? This is very thoughtful of you, Richard. 
A small birthday acknowledgement for your lovely Catherine. Oh, good heavens. Well, it's absolutely enchanting. Thank you so much. There's a whistle as well. <laughs> I don't know whether to give it to Cat or keep it myself. I should be so very pleased to be given the opportunity to offer you far more beautiful and certainly more appropriate gifts, Scarlet. Are you what we call in Georgia making advances, Richard? <laughs> Only of the most tentative sort. It's been quite some time since I was given a gift by a man. I'd call that an inexcusable lapse. Well, me too, I guess, if I was to think about it, but I'd just as soon not. Perhaps you should. Why? You might find yourself more inclined to correct the situation. I don't know that it needs correcting. Don't you? Cat's going to adore this. Thank you. May I inquire in all innocence, I assure you, whether you considered a jaunt down to Dublin? I have been thinking about that, yes. The state ball is just a month away. State ball? What's that? It sounds fancy. It's quite elegant, yes. At Dublin Castle, home of the Viceroy and Viceroyne. Viceroyne? I guess that'd be Mrs. Viceroy. <laughs> I shouldn't address her as such if I were you. Are you suggesting I might have the opportunity to address her at all? Scarlet, I do believe you're toying with me in your very best and most charming Southern Belle manner. <laughs> And what a belle you must have been. Then would you care to escort me to the state ball in Dublin, Lord Fenton, and introduce me to the Viceroy and his missus? I should be delighted, Mrs. Butler. Are you in a rush, Scarlet? Or can I have a bit of your time? I'm in no hurry. Will we go up to my hovel? I can make you a cup of tea. At all times, I've asked you to show me where you live. You don't think I'm going to turn down an invitation like that? I'm going to a horse fair next week. Are you? Where? A place called Drogheda. Ah, it's a fine fair. Are you buying or just looking? I'm looking to buy. Is there something special you wanted to see me about? There is. Looks like it might be serious. It is of an enormous trust, Scarlet. And we're giving you ours. We? Who? The Fenian Brotherhood. What do you have to do with them, Colin? A great deal. You're not one of them, are you? It's not what you're telling me, are you? Yes, I am. But you're a priest. I was an Irishman before I was a priest. And should I be denied my priesthood, I'd still be an Irishman. They want there to be a revolution, don't they? The Fenians. The time will come. Not this year, not next, maybe. But it'll come as sure as the day. And like the day, it'll take us out of the dark night of oppression we've been in these near 200 years. You're talking about killing people. Do you recall telling me about your loathing for the Union soldiers who walked the streets of your own Charleston, South Carolina? The streets of a city under the rule of a military government near ten years after the end of the war you lost. Well, can you imagine that same government taking all the bounty of your land and sending it to the north whilst your own people were scrabbling for what was left and starving to death? Can you imagine that, Scarlet? I don't have to imagine it, Colm. It happened to us. I lived it. All right, then. I've got something to show you. It's all right, Brendan. Is it done? It is. Scarlet, say hello to Brendan Donnelly. Hello. This is 
on my land. And you have a right to know it. What would happen to me if the English found this, damn it all? I'd lie like the devil if I was you. And if I was you, I'd get away with it. We might not be quite so fortunate, eh, Colin? Where do they come from? America, mostly. And believe it or not, we have friends in England. Would I be correct in assuming this is why you do so much travelling? You would. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Wish you good luck and try and forget all about it. I hope a true English soldiers don't come banging on my front door in the dead of night. We'll take the good luck and thank you for it, ma'am. But you might do more. It's not only guns we're involved with, Scarlet. There's other gentler work we're about. The money needed for that as well. Paying rents to keep people in their homes. Feeding them that are in their homes but starving. Clothing children. Affording them something in the way of an education. In secret, mind you. Because educating children is against the law as well. <laughs> I wonder if you realise, Scarlet. If we had governed ourselves these last couple of centuries, you wouldn't be able to understand a word I'm saying to you. Because I'd be speaking in my own tongue. I'd be speaking Irish. But I can't speak Irish, because I never learned it. As generation upon generation of us never learned it. Because it was against the law to learn it. It was against the law to speak it. Against the English law. I might have been lots better off if I didn't understand a word you've been saying. What's your estimation? I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Has she mentioned Lord Fenton? Not of late, no. Why? She's made a mention of possibly going to Dublin with him. How would you judge her association with him thus far? I'd judge it to have some dark potential. Three-year-olds. What? I'm glad I came along with you. It pains me hard to think of you being bested by an Irish horse trader. What makes you so sure I'd be bested? <laughs> You've not made the acquaintance of an Irish horse trader, darling. Fiddle the bee. You'll see some of the finest horses in the country at this fair. A hundred guineas isn't unheard of for an animal. I'll get three pair of first-class plow horses for less than that. Oh, I'm so glad I came along. You'll definitely be needing native assistance, dear cousin. <laughs> Red and the purple, the pair of them, huh? I had their mother for years. Come on now, have a look. Have a look. Don't be shy. Perfectly matching three year old. Seven guineas the pair. I dare any man on the ground. Match a bargain the like of that. Ah, look at that. There's a fine lady. Knows an animal when she sees one. Come on, ma'am. I know by the cut of you. Huh? Don't be shy. Have a look for yourself. Seven guineas for the pair of them, huh? <laughs> Three-year-old, my maiden aunt. I've got a grandfather younger than them. Terrible thing to say about a horse, huh? Look at that beauty, the grey. Are you here to buy hunters or are you here to buy plow horses? I can look, can I? Oh, Colin, look at it. I wonder how much they're asking for. If you're contemplating riding to hounds, I'm washing my hands of you totally. Riding to hounds? What's that? Otherwise known as fox hunting. Oh, I've heard of that. They do that in Virginia. I've often thought it might be... What is it, Scarlet? You all right? You look like you've seen a ghost. In the manner of speaking, I guess I have. What's that? I've seen a ghost, Colin. One of my own making. I don't know what you're talking about, darling. Have you had to touch your son? Do you see that tall, very good-looking gentleman over there with the long coat and the brown felt hat? Uh-huh. That's my dearly departed husband. Get away. 
Leave it to God. What are you going to do? Well, now that I've somewhat recovered my wits, I'm going to ask you to excuse me, Colin. I'll find you later. Let's go on Hello, Ray. I'd heard a couple of vague rumors that you might be an island scholar. If I'd heard any vague rumors you'd be coming, maybe I wouldn't be. Well, I assure you I had no idea that I was tempting fate. Well, maybe we can tempt it now and again, but we sure can't fight it, can we? Evidently not. So how you been? I've been just fine. May I be the last to offer you my congratulations on your marriage? Thank you. Did your bride accompany you to Ireland? She has. Though she did not uh, come along today, and... Uh, she's not generally fond of horses. I hope that's her only failing. <laughs> you haven't changed, Scarlet. <laughs> Why would I? <laughs> There's a refreshment tent over there, wait. I'd say that might do us both good. Tea, sir? It seems though you dropped off the face of the earth, Scarlet. Wild mist. I needed to burn some bridges. Are you here sightseeing or are you in the horse business now? A little of bone. You buy anything? Not yet. What are you in the market for? A horse that can run like the wind. Or a horse that'll sire a horse that can run like the wind. Mm -hmm. I want a horse running in Kentucky Derby but in five years. Running in what? It's a new race run for the first time this year. They're figuring on making it the biggest horse race in the country eventually. Maybe they will. Living around these parts now? No, um, let in a small cottage in County Kildare. Small cottage? Doesn't sound like you, Scott. Drinks, sir. Ah. Glass of champagne, please. Yes, sir. Oh, here comes my garden advisor in the animal aisle. Does he know about me, that I'm your former wife? No, why should he? Good, it's what I'd prefer. There you are, Rex. It's a job. <laughs> Sorry, I happened to run into, into an old friend. <laughs> Sir John Morland. Mrs. O'Hara, pleased to meet you. How do you do? Fellow countrymen of Rhett's, I take it. Mm -hmm. Visiting Ireland, are you? Splendid. Wonderful country. Do you hunt? I'm afraid I don't like guns. <laughs> I mean, riding to hounds, of course. Oh, fox hunting. Well, I've never done it. Oh, well, we must correct that by all means. Might you join us this weekend? My wife and I will be delighted to see you. And Mr. O'Hara, of course. I'm widowed. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. But the invitation stands, of course. We're near Dunsany. Do you know that part of the country? Mm -hmm. Moreland Manor. Anyone will tell you the way from Dunsany. Rhett, I've seen quite a marvellous bear you absolutely must have a look at. Bidding starts at 10.30 sharp. I'll see you there. Mrs. O'Hara, delighted. Now, you won't disappoint me, will you? I don't believe I will, Sir John. Saturday next, stirrup cup at seven, breakfast after. Widowed. What a charming man. Widowed. Better widowed than divorced. If telling people being divorced by your husband was so humiliating for you, why don't you tell them you divorced him? Me. Well, I didn't think of that until it was too late. I wasn't operating on my fullest mental capacities at the time. Anyhow, all you have to do is this one small favor for me. If at least you owe me. How do we settle all our debts to each other, Scarlet? Well, all right, forget about owing it. But it's only for one day, and you don't have to actually tell any lies. All you have to do is just let people believe I am what I said I am. My old friend from home, Mrs. O'Hara. Will you, for old time's sake? Well, it won't be easy pretending I'm a corpse. But I'll do my best, my dear. I knew you wouldn't be a skunk. See you Saturday week. That's where you left it? You're living alone, temporarily in Kildare, not a mention of the baby? He'll buy his horse, he'll go back home, and that'll be the end of it. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. What? Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And credits of Walter Scott for that observation. I never was much on reading.
Was she always so odd? Scarlet and odd, darling. She's uh, unusual. Saying she's a widow? Honestly, Red, I don't find that unusual. I find that quite odd. Well, this is the whole little game. Now you will go along with it, won't you? If it's what you wish, of course I will. I wonder what it'll be like seeing her again, the way things are. Here you are, ma'am. Good I don't want you to make that mistake again. Chambers, fetch the hands. Get her. Isn't that the American woman over there? Mrs. is yeah. I'll have a word with her. Good morning. Good morning, Lady Morland. Isn't it a perfect day for a hunt, though? Well, I really wouldn't know. Yes, of course. Is it to be your first go, isn't it? It's the first time for everything. We shall keep a sharp eye out for you. Oh, you don't have to concern yourself. I'm a quick study, generally. I beg your pardon? I learn fast. Huh. What happens when you get the fox? Well, strictly speaking, we don't catch it. The dogs do. They make rather a mess of it. If you're at all queasy, you needn't look. I'll manage. Does the fox ever get away? Rarely. I must say, you sit that horse as though you've been riding to hounds all your life. <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. Evidently. Good morning, Mr. Butler. Good morning, Red. I was beginning to think you weren't going to be along. Where's your lovely wife? But she'll not be joining us today. Oh, I forgot she doesn't care for horses. What a pity. Good hunting, Scarlet. Same to you. The fox gets away, though, sometimes. Did you know that? <laughs> Formerly Hampton. Sure, I remember you. Where's Red? Well, he's downstairs. I'm to fetch him when you come awake. I'm awake? Well, just barely, I should say. The doctor says nothing's broken, thank goodness. He thinks you have a slight concussion, though. I've got a lump the size of a potato back here. I haven't been thrown from a horse since I was ten years old. But it was your first fox hunt, Red said. And it won't be my last. It's lovely to see you again, Scarlett. Did Red tell you, should anyone inquire, there's only one Mrs. Butler around here and you're her? If you're referring to your supposed widowhood, then yes, he did explain it to me. Or I should say he told me about it. Its explanation is something that escapes me. How come you're here? I came with Red, of course. Not Ireland, here. I, I don't know that I can rightly say. It just came over me to want to see you. In a private moment, I mean. 
Brett says you knew we were married. Were you terribly surprised when you heard? I don't recall feeling surprised, no. Shouldn't you rest a bit longer? I wish someone had saddled up that horse again. I haven't been thrown since I was ten years old. Brett does say you're unusual, Scarlet. Does he? What else does he say about me? Well, nothing. What would he say? Maybe that I was the biggest, darndest fool God ever made and for years treated him dreadfully until I realized how much I loved him. And then it was too late and he divorced me. And then I did injury to insult and married you. Maybe he might have said something along those lines. He never once so much as hinted at anything remotely similar to what you just described. You love him, huh? Of course I do. I adore him. Me too. You must hate me then. Feeling as you say you do about Rhett. Don't take it personal. I'd hate anybody who's married to Rhett. You must hate me especially now, then. What in the blue blazes are you talking about? About the baby, of course. What baby? My baby. The one I'm gonna have. I feel so perfectly ridiculous being affected that way. Wasn't it absolutely silly of me? I mean, as if I didn't know that... Of course, it was inevitable, wasn't it? People get married. People have babies. Night follows day, doesn't it? She'll probably bear him ten children. See if I can. I'm going to Dublin, did I tell you? No. I'm going to Dublin. That'll be a welcome change for you. I'll say it will. I'm going to meet the Viceroy and his, uh, what's it, what's she called? The Viceroy and the Viceroyne of Ireland, that is. Doesn't it sound grand? He's cousin to the Queen of England. Yes, I know. But how's all this coming about? Lord Fenton. I thought as much. You're becoming more like a landlord, Scarlet. I am a landlord. Yes. But so far you've been one of ours. Would you rather be one of theirs? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Colin. You're going to make me very cross if you start passing down your Irish judgments on me. There's no judgment in it, Scarlet. Only guidance. I'd hate to see you set your course on the path of folly. I'm going to Dublin to have some fun. And I'm going to be escorted by a perfectly respectable gentleman who happens to be English. If there's any path of folly I'm starting down, it's the one I'm setting foot on with this. What's this? What the heck do you think it is? It's not a sack of stones. I said I'd think it over. I've thought it over. Mind you, it's for helping people, not killing them. Not a shilling of that is intended for the purchase of so much as a single bullet. I assume I have your word on that. It's more than we could have hoped for or ever expected, Scarlet. I have a tendency to overdo things.
hotel shall work, Mrs. Butler. May your stay be an altogether memorable one. Well, I'm just sure it will be. Uh, now, Mrs. Fitzpatrick, let me show you to your room. Stay. Tomorrow? So soon? I thought I'd have more time to get myself ready. There'll be plenty of time. I'll tell you everything you need to know. How much do I need to know? Your right hand from your left. Can't be that easy being presented to the Viceroy of Ireland in the throne room at Dublin Castle. Shall I take you through it, step by step? Somebody better. You'll be with others to be presented, awaiting your turn. How will I know when it's my turn? The gentleman usher, as he is known, will call your name. Marvellous. Madam, the O'Hara of Ballyhar. The O'Hara of Ballyhar. third step back. Did anybody notice? Certainly not. You were impeccable. I feel like Cinderella. After this evening, you will have your pick of princes, Scarlet. Do I have to have a prince? Couldn't I just be Cinderella without a prince? Out of the question, of course. I suppose it wouldn't be quite the same, would it? I believe you'd find your Cinderella hood lacking in certain essential elements. And I guess I better keep my eyes open. Too bad the Viceroy is already married. And hardly your type if he weren't. And what would you say my type is? You know perfectly well what I'd say. But you're not a prince, you're an earl. <laughs> you know what they'd say about me back home? They'd say I was in high cotton. <laughs> Do you have a Mrs. O'Hara staying with you here? May I ask which Mrs. O'Hara you're inquiring of, sir? How many are there? Uh, we've three Mrs. O'Hara stopping with us, sir. Uh, there's Mrs. James O'Hara and Mrs. Connor O'Hara and there's Mrs. Fergal O'Hara. You have a Mrs. Uh, Butler? Oh, indeed, yes, sir, we have. How many of those are there? Oh, well, there's only the one Mrs. Butler whose custom we've the pleasure of, sir. I'm right. Be sure she has a hat right there. There's a bit of a chill today. I will, that. Uh, message for you, Mrs. Butler. Thank you. I guess I'd have to say you're full of surprises as to where you're going to turn up next. Well, I was afraid that if I gave you any advance warning, you might run off again without so much as a buy your leave like you did last time we met. I suppose that was sort of rude of me. I just wanted to make my departure with as little fuss as possible. I declare I haven't been thrown from a horse since I was ten years old. What brings you to Dublin, anyhow? And how did you know where I was stopping? Stopping? <laughs> Staying. Maybe I've been over here too long. How did you know I was even in Dublin, for that matter? Your name was in the Irish Times a couple of days ago. It seems you've become one of the bells of the balls around here. I could use a spot of fresh air, couldn't you? Now, look in this 
especially rosy cheeks and vibrant skulls. I'd take you for native Irish if I didn't know better. Must be the Irish air. Do you intend breathing it for some time to come? What do you mean? Well, will you make your life here now? Oh, I don't know. I don't think too much about the future, at least not too far into it. I started to keep myself from doing that when you divorced me. And I stopped a little bit more when I heard you got married again. And last week at Lord Morland's, well, I guess I stopped altogether. Why? When your wife told me she was going to have a baby. Could be my imagination, but I sort of got the feeling she enjoyed telling me. Oh, well, naturally, Anne is very pleased with her condition, if that's what you mean. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, I sort of got the feeling there was just a touch of her gloating in telling me. You must be imagining that, Scott. I can't imagine why Anne would gloat in it. Oh, Rhett. You'll never understand women. You never will. She knows I'm still in love with you. Scott. Oh, don't look so innocent and frazzled, Red Butler. You think because you stopped loving me, I stopped loving you? Is that what you've been telling yourself? Lord knows I... Never in my wildest dreams ever thought I'd tell a man I loved him who I knew in advance wasn't going to say it back. But I guess there's just some things you've got to be true about. What? I'm sorry. I am so sorry. That's not your fault. I brought it on myself. You didn't bring anything on yourself, Scarlet. It was just... Oh, be quiet, Red. What do you know about it? Maybe you don't know as much as you think you know. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Tell me then. I could have been a better wife to you than I was if I'd had the chance when I was ready to be that, but... You didn't give me the chance, and now it's... It's too late. That's all I'm talking about. It wasn't my intent to cause you any distress by coming by to see you. I have my apologies for that. You going to be in Dublin long? I can take care of my business this afternoon. I'll be gone by morning. Then we shouldn't have any trouble avoiding each other for the remainder of your stay. Done what, sir? You're hoping for a boy or a girl. Scarlet. Why did you come? Why did you? Why did you come? You seem not altogether your usual self this evening, Scarlet. Really? I've discerned a certain air of melancholy about you. I guess I'm just a little bit tired out. I've gotten unused to the social world, maybe. You must accustom yourself to it again. Mustn't you? I don't know, must I? When you return to your bucolic existence in Ballyhara, you leave me desolate. I suspect a man like you wouldn't be too very desolate for too very long, Richard. <laughs> you flatter me and underestimate yourself, Scarlet. You're welcome to the flattery, but I'm far too immodest to ever underestimate myself. You can be scarifyingly candid at times, can't you? Every once in a while. In the spirit of candor, then, may I suggest that you're fully aware of my feelings for you? Sure, I am. Scarlet, you're a woman of maturity and no little experience. I am myself not altogether without a certain appeal, I like to think. You're entirely justified in thinking it. I confess I find your reticence somewhat baffling. I guess it would be. Would it offend you if I were to ask for an explanation? That would be fair enough. It's not you that I don't care for. It's another man that I love. How could I not have been aware of him? Who is he? You are aware of him. I was married to him. <laughs> Good Lord. You don't mean your late husband. I'm afraid I do. Oh, my dearest darling Scarlet. Will you pine the rest of your days for a dead man? I 
suppose he is dead for me, isn't he? Suppose I don't understand. I mean, I suppose he should be dead for me. He must be, Scarlet. Let him be, so that you may live. I want to. I want to live. I'm saying nothing of the kind. My assumptions are founded on your behavior before we entered this room. <sighs> Not after. Now I'm embarrassed. Shoot. You have nothing to be embarrassed about, Scarlet. You're a marvelous woman. I still don't feel natural. Number 25, please. Ah, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Thank you very much. This uh, telegraph just come moments ago from Mrs. Butler, sent on from Ballyhara, it looks. I was just sending someone up to slip it under her door. Oh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. I'll see to it. Uh, good night, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Good night, Mr. O'Brien. Mm -hmm. I'd still like to change. Rather late for a caller? Maybe it's about the baby. Mrs. Fitz, is Cat all right? Perfectly fine, ma'am. Excuse the lateness of the hour, but here's this telegraph come for you. And being rare as they are, I thought it best you got it right away. Seems it might be of some importance. I hope I haven't. Good evening, Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you, Mrs. Fitz. Good night. necessary to declare your presence in my bedroom. I'd have much preferred it if you hadn't. But why, darling? Because we aren't man and wife, that's why. <laughs> Scarlet, Mrs. Fitzpatrick is a woman of mature years, and I feel sure some considerable experience of life. She was mortified. A little startled, perhaps. As your servant, she is in no position to be mortified by the actions of her mistress. She's not my servant. Employee, then, whatever you like, Scarlet. But in any case, you're being altogether unreasonable. Unreasonable? Well, maybe it's unreasonable to you, but it's my reputation. Scarlet, your reputation is quite secure, my darling, I assure you. We are all considerably sophisticated people, are we not? Do you suppose your reputation will suffer one iota when the nature of our association becomes known? I promise you, it won't. Who says it's going to become known? <laughs> but it will be presumed. However discreetly, surely you must realize that. Well, now I suppose you'll be running all over Dublin and wherever else blabbing you've enjoyed my favor. <laughs> now you're being quite silly. What I'm being is quite furious. You do have something of a temper, don't you? I believe I've exhausted my reserves of solicitude.
Good night, Scarlet. I do hope the morning finds you in more agreeable temper. Down to the hall porter. Have him consult the ship and news. I need to know when the next boat sails from Galway to America. We're leaving for Ballyhara in the morning. Here's the Ahara back as a nut. Son of a nut for Whoa! Where are you, Sean? Boy, the father. Welcome home. Not for long. What's in the wind? I've had a telegraph from our lawyer in Atlanta. My sister Sue Ellen is gravely ill, he says. She's asking for me. Sue Ellen? Well, that will be the one with whom you've always had somewhat contentious relations, huh? Yes, but she's asking for me. Why, she'll figure me to be the last person in the world she'd be wanting. All the more reason for me to go. What is that? There's a ship out of Galway day after tomorrow. Oh, well, you best make haste. That's what I'm making. I'll be up to Ballyhara to see you off. Would you inform Mrs. Butler that I'm here? Ah, yes, sir. Mrs. Butler made her departure from the hotel rather early this morning, sir. She asked... Departure? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh, yes, sir, indeed. She asked that you be handed this, Lord Fenton, should you be by. Mind the steps, no? Right. Try, try it. Mind the steps as you come, please. Thank you, Sadie. Get up on top, please. Up on top. And leave space for the other thing. Mrs. Fitz tells me you're leaving the child behind. Well, I'm not altogether comfortable about it, but she'll be fine here. If I take her to Atlanta, there's too much chance of rape getting wind of I've already had a real close call in Dublin. Oh, don't look at me that way. I know full well how you feel about it, but she's my baby and I'll decide what's best for her. And for you. Yes, all right, then, and for me. Now stop looking at me like a priest and wish me a bon voyage. You're right. I will. Goodbye. They're lovers. What? For invention. What are you saying? What I've said. How do you know? What would you make of him coming half-dressed out of her bedroom in the middle of the night? She should never have been told about us. There's danger in her now. Don't be daft, woman. He's in her bed. She'll be in his. As anything could come of it. Come in time? Thank God. Where is she? A towel? No, we're in the hospital here. What's wrong with her, Will? Having a baby. She had an awful time, Scarlett, just awful. And then there was all sorts of infections set in and fevers. She and... didn't want any more babies, Will Benteen. Did it live? It's a boy. So Sue Ellen could be dying just because you had to have a boy? I swear, I'll never understand men. I never will.
Söylem. Söylem. Are you awake? Olur. Oh, Scarlet, you've come. Well, of course I have, you ninny. Did you think I wouldn't? Well, Scarlet's come. I know, dear heart. Didn't I tell you she would? Oh, we got a boy, Scarlet. So I heard. <gasps> Looks like you paid high for it, too. It was worth it. We also wanted a boy. I named him Gerald. After Paul. <laughs> oh, that's fine, Zuel, and that's so fine. Where is it? At, at Tara. Which is where you're going to be quick as a blink, sister. They're saying I might not die after all. Fiddle to dee. Of course you're not going to die. You don't think I came halfway around the world to watch you kick the bucket, do you? You've been away such a long time, Scarlet. I know. It's good to be back. You're staying home for good. As soon as I figure out where home is, that's where I'll be staying, honey. This is your home, Scarlet. This has always been your home. We'll talk about it tomorrow. What are the doctors saying? They're saying she's probably going to come through, but probably is about as far as they'll go. She looks terrible. She was seen her two weeks ago. You going to be here for a while, Scarlet, in Atlanta? Of course I am. At least until Sue Ellen's out of the woods and back home with Tara. That's what we can still call it. Meaning what? Well, meaning we got notice some long time back that you bought up Kareen's share of Tara, which pretty much makes you most the owner of it. Most maybe. Not only. Now, I'm heading back to the Peachtree Street house. Make myself decent so I can come back this evening and spend some time with Sue Ellen. I telegraphed Uncle Henry to have it made presentable enough for living, and I hope he managed it. Well, if you told him to, Scarlett, I just bet he did. Whose idea was it naming the baby after our pa? That was my idea. Thank you, Will. Entirely welcome, Scarlett. I presume you'd be Mrs. Butler. What's your name? Ransom, ma'am. Hello, Ransom. I assume you're engaged by Mr. Hamilton. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, are there other staff as well? There's a cook and a parlor maid and a personal maid for yourself, ma'am. She's unpacking your luggage right now. since you've gone wherever you went to. And Mr. Hamilton told Miss Ashley you was coming back. Miss Ashley asked me if I wanted to come over and help you out. I said I sure do. So here I am. You're a sight for sore eyes, Pansy. You surely are. So is you, Miss Scarlet. Where have you been to, anyhow? You 
were asleep when I got here. I guess I fell asleep waiting for you to wake up. How are you feeling? Thirsty. You should be home in bed. Isn't it awful day? You look a bit better than you did this afternoon. Should I dare look in the mirror? Not yet. <laughs> I must look a fright. Miss Will. He was leaving as I was coming in. He said he'll be back first thing in the morning, though. I can't wait to see your new baby. And how about the other kids? Oh, they're fine. Susie's blooming. She's crazy about horses. She's getting to be a wonderful rider. <laughs> Reminds me of you when you were little. Made me nervous as anything at first, remembering your Bonnie in it. Oh, shoot, Scarlet, I am sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. It's all right. But what about Martha and Peggy? They're fine. Will says they're beside themselves having a baby brother. It means such a lot to me that you came, Scarlet. For me, I mean. I didn't think you would. When neither was getting any younger, Sue Ellen. And with any luck, we'll both be living a good time longer. I'd say it's time we buried the hatchet. You mean someplace besides in each other's backs? <laughs> <laughs> oh! What's the matter? Oh, just a little twinge. Will said you wasn't supposed to be doing too much talking. Do you want me to read to you? <sighs> I haven't been read to since Mama used to. If you're not out of this hospital, by the time I get to chapter three, I'll never forgive you. It was a golden morning in the early spring, and the land of Shumir, as far as the eye could reach, blossomed as a rose. Are you home for good, as I hope? I'm not altogether sure this is home anymore, if truth be told. Tell me about yourself, Ashley. I hear from Henry the lumber yard is flourishing. Oh, yes, yes, it is, thanks to you. Me? What have I got to do with it? Before you go and tell another of your perfectly awful fibs, I should inform you that the cat was let out of the bag in your absence. Which cat? Atlanta Acres Real Estate Incorporated. That cat. You found out. Poor Big Sam. He let something slip one day. I badgered him until he had to come out with it and confess that Atlanta Acres Real Estate Incorporated was and is Mrs. Scarlett O'Hara <laughs> Butler, you little vixen. Don. How can I thank you, Scarlett? Don't you dare to try, Ashley Wilkes. My lips are sealed. My heart, however, will never stop speaking its gratitude. As for me being Mrs. Scarlett O'Hara Butler, I guess you must surely know I'm that no longer. Oh. You're well rid of him, Scarlett. You know, he was never, never worthy of you. Well, maybe you could put it all behind you now as if it never happened. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that, Ashley. Why, dearest? Why? I can't tell you. Cannot or will not. All right, then have it your way. I will not. Then you must be fearful of consequences. I never realized till this very moment how much I wanted to tell somebody, somebody. Maybe it's being here again, being home. Could I be so mistaken of your character, Scarlet, after all these years that... I'm unable to imagine you capable of anything so terrible as to cause you such fearsome anguish. You never saw me clear, Ashley. You never did. Then let me now. I have a child, Ashley. I've born Red's child. I'm 
We're selling up, Uncle Henry. Selling up what, Scarlett? Everything. The whole kit and caboodle. The store, the Peachtree Street house, the housing tract, all of it. I'm relinquishing my assets here, cleaning my slate. Well, why in the world? I found a new life for myself. And I don't really think I can start living it to the fullest as long as I have one foot in Atlanta and the other in Ireland. Well, why the dickens don't you just plant them both here? Well, I've given that a lot of thought, Henry. But I don't believe my heart is here any longer. And a person has to be where their heart is, don't they? Well, this is a bad time to sell, Scarlett. We're having a depression here. Business is bad in general. The real estate market is the hardest hit, and the hardest hit real estate is big places like yours. People are moving down generally, not up. How about the housing tract? Oh, well, now that's a different story. Well, those kind of houses are selling as soon as you put them up. You're making a fortune. They, I assume that you've read your financial statement. You'd be smart to put up another 50 houses out there. I'm divesting, Uncle Henry, not investing. Well, suit yourself. If you don't want to bother with selling my property, I won't take it against you. Just tell me so. Well, I'm an old man, Scarlet. But if you are dead set on this course of action, I want to be the one to take care of it for you. Thank you, Henry. What about Tara? I'm not selling Tara. There's only one other person in the world who knows. He's my cousin. He's a priest. I hope I can trust you like I trust him. How could you doubt it, Scarlet? I don't doubt it. I just felt I had to say that. I would die before revealing your secret to a living soul. But will you never tell Red? Well, I don't know about never. Never's like always. There are a couple of words in my experience it's best not to get overly attached to. <laughs> Is there nothing that might induce you to remain here? That bright light in the sky behind me is my bridges burning, Ashley. I guess the past has been neatly, finally finished. Almost. the slightest little twinge giving up the peach tree street house scarlet that fabulous house maybe just a slight one naturally after all it's where i lived with red when my bonnie was born but if the truth be known what i mostly felt was relief when that girl's school made the offer uncle henry just jumped at it and next to having a very large happy family in it i think it being a girl's school is the next best thing well, what about the story Turns out the land it's standing on is worth more than the place itself. The people that bought it are going to tear it down and put up a building eight stories high. Eight stories? It'll be scraping the sky. <laughs> I can hardly imagine it myself. Anyhow, now there's just the one piece of business left for me to attend to. That'd be Tara. Are you thinking about selling up your share of Tara, Scarlett? No. I'm giving it away. Giving it away? Who to? To Sue Ellen. Oh, Scarlett, do you mean it? Oh, Will. That's awful decent of you, Scarlett. Fiddle to Dee. Maybe someday you'll pass it on to your son. And a Gerald O'Hara will be master of terror again. The 
hatchet's buried. Back, madam. Sweetheart, <laughs> look at you. Oh, darling. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Fitz. Welcome back, Mrs. Butler. Oh, it's grand to be back. Did you get my letter? I did. All has been attended to for your arrival. Lovely. I had no idea I'd miss it so much. Did Blue Bonnet fall? She did indeed, with a fine mare. I haven't expressed our relief to have heard the news of your sister. Thank you. She'll be fit as a fiddle now. And how is Mrs. Brophy's condition? All recovered, thanks be to God. I passed on your good wishes. I'll drop in on her tomorrow. If you're not in need of me immediately, I'll see to the unpacking then. Yes, thank you. I brought along some gifts. They're wrapped in the brown paper parcels. Just lay them out, will you? My darling Scarlet, what an incorrigible vixen you are. Shame, shame for having so taken your precipitous leave without affording me the opportunity to wish you good fortune in what, in the unfortunate circumstances, must surely have been an extremely anxious journey to your homeland. I hope that you arrived in time to witness the complete recovery of your sister. But my most fervent wish, as you must surely suppose, is that there be no delay whatsoever in your communication with me upon your most eagerly awaited return. Yours, Richard. You're late. Considerably so. It's a wonder I'm here at all. Oh, really? I could hardly bring myself to come. No. No more. Don't be silly. I have something to tell you. We'll discuss it later, shall we? We'll discuss it now! What sort of unspeakable devil could do what you've just done? What is it you Paddy say? Better the devil you know than the devil you don't? <laughs> May God have mercy on me for carrying the child of that devil then. Welcome back. It's 
So that's that, and that's all there is to it. I had to make a decision sooner or later, and once and for all, and it's made. That part of my life is done for, and I'm raring to go to begin the next part, which is here and now. Look here. I don't know if it's me and my imagination, but I get the funniest feeling you haven't heard a word I've said since I came through that door. Nothing of the kind. I heard every word. I'm pleased I was to hear them. There's something on your mind, isn't there? Has something happened since I've been away that you're not saying? If there is, I wish you'd just say it out, Colm O'Hara. I'm waiting, Colm. I have no right to speak what's in my mind, Scarlet. I could curse myself for betraying it enough to cause your suspicion of it. You should be proud of your incapability to deceive. If I were as good a person as you, there'd be things in my life that'd be altogether different. I am not good. God help me, I'm not good. Colm, what's the matter? Smitten, Scarlet. You've come into my heart the way no woman ever should. No. Colin, no. Oh, that you might will these feelings from my heart with that word, Scarlet. No, no. Do you suppose I haven't cried it out to myself night after night with every dawn? No, I've said no. You cannot, Colin O'Hara. You may not. You must not. Oh, dear, Colin. I never imagined. Uh, nor did I. Nor, God forgive me, did I. What can I do? Let me help you, please. Let me help you. Oh, I cannot bear to face you. Scarlet, I beg you, please, don't require it of me. What are you doing out here? Waiting for you. Guess you've been down with that horse again. Well, he's such a fine horse. I never tire of looking at him. It's the middle of the night, Rhett. Couldn't sleep. Seems like there's a lot of nights you can't sleep. And when you do, you don't sleep easy. Have I been disturbing you? 
I'm so sorry, dearest. It's not a question of what's been disturbing me, Rhett. It's a question of what's disturbing you. Well, the only thing that's disturbing me right now is seeing you sitting out here in your nightdress, probably catching your death of cold. Now, come on inside. See if you can get you warmed up. It's ever since Ireland. What's ever since Ireland? You. You haven't been the same since we came back. Since before we came back. I don't know what you mean. Oh, I guess you do, Rhett. It's Scarlet. Scarlet? What's Scarlet, Anne? You've seen her again. It's Scarlet, isn't it? I haven't foggiest notion what you're talking about. Right, maybe I'm not nearly so quick a mind as you, but I'm not a fool either. Do you think I haven't noticed the way you've been since the day of that damned fox hunt? Well, what way have I been? Like, maybe you needed spectacles to see me. My darling, I can assure you. I can see you as clear as clear can be. And as beautiful to behold as you are. Maybe you never should have divorced her. Well, they do say ladies in your delicate condition get some pretty wild ideas sometimes. You said her name. I don't understand. In your sleep one night, you said her name. You said Scarlet, just like that. I didn't know I talked in my sleep. Maybe just when you got something important to say. What do you mean by that? I don't know. I don't know what I mean. You love me, Red. Do you? Tell me you love me. Of course I love you. Of course I do. I love you, man. I love you. Dear me, Lord. Oh. To your most welcome and longed for return, dearest Scarlet. Did you miss me? You may be as assured of that of the sun setting in the west. Well, I guess that's pretty sure. But dare I ask the same of you, I wonder? I suppose I could play the coy and tantalizing maiden at this point, but. I expect it's a little late for that. And it wouldn't become you. What would? In my brief but memorable experience of you, Scarlet, I believe you're in no need of guidance in that regard. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not, or I wouldn't have given my staff the evening off. I guess you couldn't expect to go around avoiding me forever. This is a real small town. I don't think it was so much avoiding you, Scarlet, as sparing you. Sparing me what? The further discomfort of my inexcusable revelations. It's discomfort to me is more than I've words to say. I suppose it hasn't occurred to you that I might have been flattered. I'd have to admit to the utter remoteness of that possibility in my mind, Scarlet. If you weren't wearing that turned-around collar, I might say a few things. Look, I am. Jim wasn't. Well, then I won't. But I'm darned if I'm going to let it be like some terrible dark cloud hanging over us and ready to burst any minute, and I hope you won't either. If you do, I'll never speak to you again. I have no defense against so dire a threat as that. Well, that's the end of it, then. We can't pretend what was said never was, but we don't have to keep listening to it. In this instance, Scarlet, your beauty is exceeded only by your wisdom. fiddle de I'll have none of that blarney, if you please. I guess I owe you something of a confession myself. 
Not that you probably need to hear it from me. I'm sure it's known all the way to County Cork by now. There's isn't much a person can keep private in these parts, is there? I guess you know what I'm talking about. I'd suppose you'd be referring to your present association with Lord Fenton. I wish you'd heard it from me first. No matter how it first came to me, ears. Are you disappointed in me, Colin? Not a bit of it. I'm only a bit worried for you. Well, I can't say what's happened with him and me hadn't crossed my mind in a vague sort of way, but I guess it was hearing that Rhett's wife was going to have a baby that tipped the scales. I had a suspicion that might be the way of it. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I can take care of myself. I've been doing it now for quite some time. Will you come up to the house for supper one evening soon? Try and stop me. By the way, where is that Blarney stone anyhow? It's been a long while since I kissed it. Come in. Mary, darling, what is this? Help me, Father God. Please, God, help me. Harder. You must surely be the relation Scarlet mentioned in passing. A priest. Cousin, is it? The same. And to what do I owe the purpose of this unlikely call? I've come on behalf of Mary Boyle. I don't understand. Oh, but certainly you do, Fenton. I've come to ask that you do the decent thing by this piteous child. To grant her the reasonable and desperate request she's made of you and that you've refused. Money. No more than's enough to spare her the shame and ignominy she's to suffer should she remain here in Ireland. She wants no more than her passage to America and the paltry funds to see her through until the birth of her child. So small a charity for a man of your means. I have been given to believe that your particular religious persuasion is the source of all charity in this country. What would be a pittance to you is far beyond our means. Surely you know that. And if it were not beyond our means, it would be impossible to provide anyway, given the nature of our predicament. Yes, of course, I see. It would be tantamount to condoning her grievous fall from grace, wouldn't it? Pity. Can't you make the honorable gesture of only this once, man? I believe all's been said that needs saying, O'Hara. I shall ask you to leave now. This isn't the face you show to Scarlet, is it? Surely not. She hasn't seen this heartless visage, has she? Would you prefer to be escorted out? What if she were to know this vile face? Could she stomach the looking upon it again? I think not. What's your reckoning on the matter, Phantom? Do I perceive a threat to my association with Scarlet? There are those who need saving from themselves and their blind folly. In respect of you, Scarlet is surely one of them. Any such revelations to Scarlet would, of course, result in most unwelcome consequences for me. Precisely. Such consequences would be entirely unacceptable. You understand? You don't suppose you frighten me with that, do you? <laughs> would that I might. But you will not be frightened. You will not be deterred. 